Both in today's first reading from the book of the prophet Daniel and in today's gospel reading, one of the things that is emphasized is that the kingdom of God will not pass away. So our Lord points out that uh, his word will not pass away. So he mentions that in the gospel and his word not passing away implies that his kingdom will be present for all ages, for all eternity. And of course, when we consider God, that God is eternal, God is almighty, of course, his kingdom will not pass away. However, while we are here on earth, we will experience ups and downs in regards to how we are able to live out our faith. Notice how our Lord points out this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. And when our Lord says this, when we read it in context, it's rather confusing. The reason is because when he talks about the end times, he implies that these things are going to take place right away. Now recall that when he speaks of the end time, he also speaks of the destruction of the temple. So the temple is destroyed within that generation. But most importantly, the kingdom of God is established on earth in the hearts of men. And that is the most important thing that we should focus on when our Lord says that, you know, it will all be accomplished or it will all take place in the here and now. When we consider today's first reading, notice Daniel, he talks about these visions that he's having. He has these visions of, of beasts rising up and, um, you know, what, what is he referring to? And the horns also, um, you know, horns coming up also. So these beasts and the horns, they represent various kingdoms or various rulers. And we can argue that these visions or these prophecies of the prophet Daniel have already been fulfilled. What is also interesting is that our Lord himself refers to the prophet Daniel. It's in chapter 24 of Matthew's gospel. And our Lord says, you know, take heed of, of Daniel's warning of, of what is to come. And that's very significant because the, this vision of, of the prophet Daniel is very similar to the visions of John the evangelist in the book of Revelation. And of course, we see that those, those messages, those visions, uh, it's a lot of it is symbolic a lot of it is difficult to interpret nevertheless they are important because our lord talks about the signs and so these visions kind of point to some of the signs that will be present now when it comes to the book of revelation not only is it difficult to interpret but once again some people would say oh well all these things these prophecies in the book of revelation have already come to pass They've already been fulfilled. And while that is true, there's many things there that have yet to be fulfilled. And so some people, when they talk about the book of Revelation, they talk about it as being kind of circular. In other words, we kind of, or mankind goes through these, these cyclical patterns of, you know, there's opposition, persecution of Christians, and then Christianity flourishes, there's a kind of renewal. So it's kind of cyclical. And interestingly enough, when we consider religious orders also, we see this cyclical pattern taking place. So you have a great founder, someone who's filled with, with the love of God and, and the Holy Spirit, someone like St. Francis of Assisi. He, he's very zealous, people want to imitate him. He starts the Franciscan order. And as time goes on, laxity sets in. But then there's someone who kind of reforms the order and once again, it's very, uh, very devout and very penitential and very much the way God intended it to be. And then it happens again and again and again. And hence the reason why there are so many different Franciscan orders out there. And what's interesting is that what, what the book of Revelation talks about pertaining to the world and, and what I just mentioned regarding religious orders, it also happens in our own lives. We kind of go through cyclical patterns. You know, sometimes we feel very close to God. Other times we feel despondent and we think, oh, God must not love me because things are so horrible. Things are going so badly, so poorly for me. 
and then something kind of picks up our spirits again. So we go through these cyclicals. Some people would say it's kind of like a wave. We have our ups and we have our downs. So that's another way of describing it. But it's important that we persevere. So no matter what difficulty we may be facing, we have to persevere. This is the most important thing. Perseverance, but also seeking for holiness. Because the tendency is that we, we become lax over time. And every year, Holy Mother Church gives us the season of Lent, not Advent, Lent, you know, to intensify our spiritual life, to remind us of things. It gives us the season of Advent to remind us of the reality of death, the reality of our Lord's second coming, the reality of the things that will take place before his second coming. So even though these things are cyclical, at some point, that cyclical cycle will end. And we don't know when that's going to happen. And so hence the need to be prepared, to have the kingdom present within ourselves while we have the opportunity to allow that to happen. And as we all know in the spiritual life, it's not always easy to overcome our sinful habits. So, you know, I, I think I preached on it once, you know, how long will it take you to prepare? Two weeks? A month? So what if you knew you were going to die? Can you overcome all your bad habits like now? Can we do it? Well, that's kind of the ideal, that we make the effort, that we really give it our all because our eternity is the most important thing. Our relationship with God, even in the here and now, is the most important thing. And so it's a reminder to us to take seriously the words of our Lord, which will never pass away, but they tend to pass away in our own minds and from our own hearts. Hence the need to be studying scripture, to be reviewing scripture, especially the New Testament, ideally to read a chapter every day. Just a couple of announcements. Next Friday will be the first Friday, and in the evening after the evening mass, we will once again have an all-night vigil of adoration. So if you're interested in participating in that, we ask that you sign up for it. There's a sign-up sheet at the back there. And also, someone asked me, uh, you know, whether, you know, we're, we're going back to doing devotions now and whether we can pray the rosary after the 9.30 a.m. Friday morning Mass. And, you know, I was kind of caught off guard. I didn't have a good answer. I, I said, oh, let me think about it. But, yeah, I think there's nothing wrong with that. So, you know, especially when we have the all-night vigil, at certain points, it would be nice to have some prayers, the rosary or the divine mercy chaplet. And there's nothing wrong with that. So yes, we need to have silent time for adoration also. But I think the rosary is a very good prayer, very meditative prayer, and especially in the presence of our Eucharistic Lord. So whoever is in charge of, of leading the rosary today, if you want to do that, uh, please go ahead and do that.